Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pop, horror, that kind of thing. Um, today I want to talk about Notice by Heather Lewis, the most disturbing book I have ever read. That's quite a bold statement, isn't it? The most disturbing book I've ever read, especially coming from, uh, you know, a channel which quite often talks about disturbing books. Um, so I thought I would take a moment and kind of check in with myself and make sure I still felt that. So I felt it when I finished this book uh, a week or so ago, but I wanted to check that I still felt that now. Um, and, and I do. And I also took the step of um, searching on the internet and going to the, the fount of all knowledge in the modern world, BuzzFeed, um, and finding their list of most disturbing books to make sure that of the ones I've read, and I've read the majority of them, that this was you know, I still felt this was more disturbing than those books. So there's a couple of things on there which I've only got on Kindle. Um, so Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, it's definitely more disturbing than that. Um, the Road by Cormac McCarthy. Yep, it's more disturbing than that. Um, a lot of the books I've got physical copies of. So Come Closer by Sarah Gran. Yep, uh, notice is definitely more disturbing than that. Uh, the Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. Yep. The Wasp Factory is it's a walk in the park compared to Notice. Um, Out by uh, Natsuo Carino. Yep, it's definitely more disturbing than that, although this is a disturbing book. Um, we need to talk about Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Yes, so this has an incredibly disturbing ending. But overall, I think Notice is definitely more disturbing. Um, the Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. A famously disturbing book. Yep, it's more disturbing than that. Uh, and Zombie by Joyce Carol Oates, which I've talked about fairly recently on the channel. Yep, also more disturbing than that. Um, and this is a book that came to me, came to my attention through um, the discussion of disturbing books on, on Booktube. Um, so Juan from Played by Visions a while ago did a, um, a Most Disturbing Books collaboration video where he got a bunch of people, and I was fortunate enough to be one of them, to talk about their, you know, the most disturbing book that they have read. Um, and this was picked out by Black Acre Doe as his most disturbing book. It was a book I had never heard of. Um, but I'm very glad that, uh, that I learned about it through that video and have now read it, although it was an absolutely horrific experience. Um, so let me tell you what it's about. So it is about a young woman um, who has fallen into a life of prostitution. She kind of hangs around the, the local train station and, you know, picks men up to make extra money. She does have um, a job as well. Um, so she has like a nine to five office type job. Um, but um, she does the, you know, she, she prostitutes herself, A, to make a bit of additional money, but also because there is something within her that compels her to do it. Um, she gets picked up um, by a, um, a kind of middle-aged man um, and taken back to his house um, where she meets his wife and she then stays with them for a period of time um, and engages in uh, kind of very rough sex uh, and acts of sadomasochism with them. Um, and the, the wife is you know very much part of these acts but you you don't feel you know necessarily like she is participating in them 100 percent willingly um the book is written from the perspective of of the young woman um so you get a lot of her kind of thoughts and feelings as she goes through this and as the book progresses she um you know that that kind of relationship ends um, and she moves out of their house and back into her own apartment um, but the repercussions of um, of what has happened um, continue to manifest themselves both in her uh, kind of psychological state, but also in events around her um, that, that you know that happen throughout the rest of the book as well. Um, so it's a pretty bleak, you know, it's a pretty bleak subject matter. Um, but what makes it so disturbing is the incredible rawness of the writing um, I'm not going to read passages you know I considered reading passages of the book out um, but I don't think it's I don't think it's appropriate to do so a because they are you know any passage I picked out would be pretty horrible um, but also because I think the book 
deserves I, I think the book is more than the sum of the individual passages within it if that makes sense so I could read out a passage and you and it would be disturbing but it wouldn't be as disturbing as reading that passage in the context of the rest of the book and in the flow of the you know of the story um but yeah there is an incredible rawness to the writing in the book there's an emotion to it and there's a a sense of kind of physicality to it in that you really feel like you are going through the things that the that happen to this character um and that's an incredibly rare talent for a writer to have so you know a lot of these books i talked about um you know like t- take american psycho so I didn't mention American Psycho. So American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis was another book that was on that list. Now that is a horrific book and a very disturbing book. But there is a sense, I think, in, in, in that book of kind of artifice of the writer inserting themselves between the reader and the events of the book. And it's, you know, it's satirical um, and it, you know, it doesn't feel real at times. It goes to such extremes that, that it doesn't feel real. Um, and I think that's true also of a book like we need to talk about Kevin. So we need to talk about Kevin is is written as a series of letters. If you've not read it, between a mother, uh, a, a wife and husband, the, the mother and father of Kevin, the, the character from the title, and that again leads itself to being a, a, a almost like a barrier between the reader and the events of the book because it is quite a self conscious style of of writing a book. Um, the Wasp Factory as well has, you know, it is kind of plays up to the grotesqueness of its story um, and therefore feels, doesn't feel real. You know, there's so many, there's so much weirdness in, in The Wasp Factory that it doesn't feel real. And therefore, whilst it is a very disturbing book, you, it's not as disturbing as, as Notice. And the thing about Notice is, you know, that, that rawness and the very kind of stripped down style of the prose. So it is literally, you know, almost like a stream of consciousness from the the central character of the things that are happening to her and what she feels about them, um, which is incredibly, an incredibly raw experience um, as a reader to read, especially when you are reading about things that are as horrific uh, and damaging and distressing as the things that happen in this book. So it's, you know, I really do think it's the most disturbing thing I've ever read because of that complete absence of of any barrier between you as the reader and the the life of this, this young woman that you are experiencing through the book. And the other thing is, you know, I've said something like The Wasp Factory feels a bit, you know, it's a bit surreal, it's very grotesque, it doesn't feel real. You, you know, when you read this book, you feel like these are things that could actually happen to someone. Th- these are things that are actually happening out there in the world. There's no artifice. There's no kind of sense of fantasy or anything like that. It feels incredibly real. And what makes it feel even more real is the life of the author. So Heather Lewis, who wrote this book, wrote three books. Yeah, Her first book... And I haven't read the other two yet. I'm going to, but I haven't yet. So her first book was this one. And I need to hold it carefully because the, the cover of this edition is somewhat obscene. So House Rules. So this is a book about um, a young woman um, in the show jumping, uh, kind of horse riding circuit um, in the States, which is um, the, you know, the, the circuit that, um, or the, you know, that's the childhood that Heather Lewis had. She was, you know, part of that, um, you know, show jumping world. Um, and it's also, you know, the, the central character in this book is a lesbian, as was Heather Lewis. The central character in this book, as I understand it, also experiences abuse um, as part of her, you know, her, her life in that show jumping world. And Heather Lewis experienced you know, childhood abuse um, as part of that world. So this is very much an autobiographical book. Her second novel. Um, is this one, The Second Suspect, which is a, um, a, a, you know, appears to be a crime novel. But let me read you the, um, let me read you the blurb for this book. Gabriel and Ingrid Sontier are a wealthy, highly connected couple with a savage secret. They like to subject teenage prostitutes to extremely rough sex. This time, though, they've gone too far. 
The girl is dead, held in custody. Gabriel calmly secures immunity for himself by accusing his bewildered wife. So it feels like, based on that description, the events in this book are pretty much identical or very similar to the events in Notice. The difference being that this book is about a detective who is investigating this crime rather than Notice, which is about a young woman experiencing that crime. Um, so it feels like Heather Lewis was, you know, the fact she effectively wrote the same story twice. You know, she was she was exercising something. Furthermore, uh, and this is the most horrific part of the whole story, Notice was published posthumously uh, because Heather Lewis took her own life um, before it was published. So that's why she only published three books, despite House Rules, you know, receiving incredibly good, you know, notices and press and, you know, being hailed as the, you know, the debut novel from a great new writer. Um, Heather Lewis was struggling, you know, clearly with depression and all sorts of um, problems from her childhood. Um, and she ended up committing suicide after The Second Suspect was published before notice could be published. Um, so a very, very tragic life and a, and a terrible end to someone who, you know, certainly on the basis of notice was an incredibly good writer. Uh, and I'm very much keen to read her other two books. Um, to see, you know, to see what they hold and to see if they have a similar quality. Um, but, you know, that, the fact of her life and the fact of her death, on top of everything else about the book that I've already talk about, talked about, you know, even more cement it um, as the most disturbing book um, for me. Um, incredibly moving, incredibly bleak, incre incredibly harrowing. Um, if you've got the... The stomach for it and it does need you know you do it's a book you need to be prepared to read because it really is horrific um if you if you think you can take it i highly recommend reading it i thought it was a, a really really excellent book so time for a random book from the shelves um so i've decided uh, to pick today this book nocturne by ed mcbain which is the book that i included uh, as my entry in juan's uh, most disturbing books video um the collaboration video so this is a book um, similar to uh, to notice and indeed to the second suspect that's about a crime committed against a prostitute um, and the crime in this book is uh, very detailed so the description of the crime is is very detailed um, and incredibly horrific but what's even worse is that as the investigation uh, into so this is you know this is a cop novel as the investigation into this young woman's death um, continues and you get the forensic examination um, of her corpse, you get even more horrific detail about what happened to her. Um, and what makes it even worse than that is the perpetrators of this crime are just the most horrifically amoral, uncaring um, people. Now, it might, it might sound obvious to say that, you know, people who commit murders are, um, you know, or can be amoral and, and uncaring, but... These, you know, the, the characters in this book just have absolutely no regard for, for human life. Um, and it's an incredibly disturbing read um, as a result, not least because, it, you know, it's, it's one of the later books in a long series of books where you've got to know um, all of the, you know, the cop characters as the series progresses. And, and you see in this book the impact of, of these events on their lives as well. Um, so, yeah, a, an excellent uh, police procedural novel uh, from my favourite book series of all time. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've read Notice or any other books by Heather Lewis, do let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, what you thought of them. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.